Hey guys, Kaltorak here. So I've got learned a lot of things about the ZF graveyard farm to maximize my gold per hour and just make it like way quicker. Um, now I'm not including a beetle pull in this. I'm doing a different strat. I know there might be optimizations with beetle pulls. I, I've been told that you can do a beetle pull with all the zombies pretty quickly. My current strat involves around doing just the zombies and as fast as possible usually my goal is six minutes and then resetting i want to get through five lockouts in 30 minutes and then i go to and grow to and farm um essence of fire which we'll talk about more later um, but i've learned a lot of tips and tricks that have made the kill phase of the zombies much easier um, one obvious one is Blade of Eternal Darkness, you'll see in the pool, just gives me infinite mana to where I can just chain um, living bombs. So that's the obvious one. Um, here are my talents for those that care. Uh, when I'm doing a tryhard ZF runs, where I'm like really focused on this, this is my build. Um, these talents don't matter. You can put them anywhere you want. These seven, I went for two points in clear casting. You could go for Permafrost and Frost Nova. You could put more points in Fire, whatever you want. Um, three points Elemental Precision for the hits. We really want this for the um, Unguro farm because we're farming high-level mobs. Uh, Frostfire Bolt is what we use to kill them. Um, Frostfire Bolt double dips on this talent, so it gets an extra hit, um, which is obviously nice versus high-level mobs. The rest of the talents are in Fire. Um... Really, it doesn't matter. Having Master of Elements is the most important part, as well as flamethrowing. Um, those will in Ignite. Those increase your DPS by a lot. But you could literally do this as any spec, as long as you have Brook Blade. Um, the next important thing to talk about is um, Noggin Foggers and Slow Falls. So, let's see if I can get over to the position without aggroing anything. So, I can just show... Don't aggro, please. So I can just show an idea. And you'll see in the pool when I do it. Oh, so we do have a Shadow Hunter. So I got to be mindful of this guy. So essentially, we are using Noggin Foggers to get a two minute slow fall. And we will be doing this jump here, just jumping back and forth here. And what this does is when you're in the air here, the mobs will, for a moment, think you're down here on this ground they don't register that you're pathing between here and here and they will start running down here you'll see in the pool that i'll get the mobs incredibly clumped up by doing this jump over and over another thing though is what sometimes you'll notice when you do the jump this way sometimes the mobs don't care and they'll just like keep running the direction they will run but when you're in mid-air if you hit a movement input of any kind it will immediately register your location to the mobs. So you'll see, you'll hear me like double tapping strafe midair. You can double tap jump midair, um, and they will immediately t come towards you down over this direction. You'll see that I get the mobs incredibly stacked, which makes my living bombs kill them super fast. Makes my living flame do maximum damage, and obviously keeping them all over here makes them super easy to loot. Again, no sp fancy buffs, just AI and mage armor. Let's try and get the pull done before that Shadow Hunter comes back. Obviously, you might want to try precasting your Noggin Foggers because there's some Molten Armor here. Um, there's some um, RNG to getting the slow fall, so you, you might just be like stuck juggling for a minute. Spamming your noggin foggers trying to get slow fall like I am right now So obviously you want to precast your slow falls And I'm getting really unlucky. So this is why um, sometimes it's like nice to use just uh, there we go. We got it Okay, so here we go. So now you can see I'm just going to get them really stacked very easily see that and now we just um, kind of pump on them now you want to be careful because they can get really close to you on the low ground if you're spamming it too much, so um, be smart with how you're juggling it. And I'm going to be a little sloppy with it because I'm still new to doing it this way, but look how tight that stack is. They're like essentially perfectly stacked right now. I mean, look at this stack. 
They're taking so much living flame damage right now. I still have plenty of time on my uh, slow fall. But you do have to keep timer on that. If, um... Whoa, see, that's what I'm talking about, how sometimes they get really close. They can auto you if that happens, so... Um, you want to uh, re-register your input is why that's breaking. At this point, you just get Living Bomb on all the ones that are up. But really easy to kill the mobs right here in this location. As you saw, that was incredibly fast. The kill phase was like... When I started pumping into them after I got my slow fall, like, they're all dead right now, and I still have 20 seconds on slow fall, so... Um, I know a lot of you have problems with getting the mob stacked. That was less than two minutes for the kill phase. Um, I could have been way more efficient there, clearly. Um, and now all the mobs are very easily lootable. So, my goal is to always do that as fast as possible within six minutes. If I can do, like, the run here, the pull, and the kill phase within six minutes, reset within 30 seconds after that, try and get five runs in, I will show you guys what I do after. Now, uh, while I, uh, I do want to quickly talk about, um, if you are not an enchanter, a lot of people do not know this, you can disenchant any item in the game from level one enchanting. So if you don't have an enchanter, all you need is a level five alt with enchanting on it, and you can mail him every single BOE you get in the game. Right now, at least on my server, it is more gold to disenchant my greens than to vendor them. So, I am not enchanting on my main. I mail all of my gold to my alts. All of my green to my alts. Um, and I also mail, like, leather and or the cloth and stuff to just, like, clear my bank and let them auction house it, but... Yeah, just disenchant your greens on an alt if you're not an enchanter. It really helps with your gold per hour. Now, let's pretend that I just hit lockout. Um, this is my last reset. Now, if you don't know how to reset like this, it's super easy. Just jump up on the pot, jump on, on the crate, log out on this corner, you get to the front. Now, I am not locked out right now, but for the sake of the video, let's pretend I'm locked out. For the sake of this YouTube video, let's pretend I'm locked out. What do I do it, when I'm speed running this and I have 25 to 30 minutes of downtime? I'm probably going to cut the YouTube video here and um, I'll just show you the next part. So we're going to leave like we're locked, reset the dungeon, and then... We are heading to Nguro Crater. Also, shout out to my guildy, Keck Healer. I believe that is AKA Nuggets, TTXL in the chat. He is the one that clued me in on the Fire Elemental farm. It has made the ZF farm go from like 60 to 80 gold per hour to where if you have filler time and you spend it there, you get an extra 20 to 40 gold per hour. Actually, 40 to 60 gold per hour. Unfortunately, the Essence's drop rate aren't great, but it has gotten me extra gold, so. Oh, nice. We got a slow fall on the first one, so. Alright, so I like to jump from here. I slow fall as far as I can. We're going to Fireplume Ridge. Um, and essentially, we are just killing the Fire Elementals there. Try and kill the lower level ones if you can. We are after Essences of Fire. Um... I'm probably only going to show myself killing one or two of them on stream, uh, in the video, but um, the Essence of Fire right now on Wild Growth, they're selling for 36 gold. And these guys drop them. So when I hit Lockout, I just run over here. Oh, hey. Let's not run into this guy on accident. Oh, no. <laughs> that would have been so funny. Oh god, that would have been the funniest thing for the video if I just landed on that bozo there. Oh man. Okay, so yeah, we're going to Fireplume Ridge. This place is already super crowded, which is why I'm not too um, afraid to like share this. There's already lots of people here. 
Um, you can, if you're a miner, you can get rich thorium here for arcane crystals, so that's huge. Um, if you happen to be a miner, this will increase your gold per hour here. Um, the fire elementals do seem to have a reasonably high respawn rate, which is why I farm them. Now, I do want to talk about advanced warding. All of these guys, whether it's based off an aura, their auto attacks, or their spells, they do fire damage. Advanced warding with rank 4 of, um, of fire ward is just so good. You, like, you can face tank these guys so well. And like I mentioned before, our main damage is Frostfire Bolt. Um, again, it can't be partially resisted. You will still get misses on high-level mobs. The extra hit helps a little bit, but when you do hit, you get full damage. So, um, I like the pre-pop fire ward, and we're just farming these dorks here. And fire ward just makes this so easy. Greens for sale or disenchanting? I sell greens. Uh, I disenchant them. Um, but yeah, HGS farm. I'll, I'll show myself killing a couple of these. Maybe we get lucky and um, get an essence on stream. But the essences of fire, I'll, I'll probably edit one in the video to um, be on screen right now. They or have already done so, probably. Um, they are selling for 35-ish gold on wild growth right now. So, when you're locked out, I just swing over here. Very easy farm for mages. Usually these kind of farms are really hard for mages, like high level farms, but the interaction with Frost Firebolt plus Fire Ward making us able to tank these mobs makes it really easy. And it's better than standing around. Um, you can get high level greens here, level 48 greens, so you might get lucky and roll a high level like Frozen Wrath or, or Fire Wrath, something along those lines. Um, but obviously we're here for the essence of fire. We'll kill a couple, we'll kill these two more mobs. I'll show one, me killing this guy and then the 55 mob over there. And then we'll call it for the video. Here I am. I, you do essentially get resist sometimes, so that makes it a little bit more awkward. These guys do have a fire damage aura, um, that will pulsate and it does have pushback on you, so... If you don't have Fire Ward and you're trying to, like, Frostbolt, Fire or Frost Fire Bolt these guys, it'll just keep pushing back your spell, you see? Like, I'm getting double pushbacks from his auto plus his pulsating aura. Super annoying. So, um, Fire Ward, obviously, you don't, if you want to do it as Frost, clearly Frost would make it, um, a little bit, uh, safer and tankier. Um, let's see if I can get one essence off this big boy. It is not a great drop rate. Let me look it up on Wildhead real quick, just so I can have put it in the video. I had Essence of Fire Living Blaze. So we're looking at like a 2% drop rate off of these guys, so it's not great. You know, you're not going to be coming over here consistently getting a lot. I've gotten four or five of them now. Um, and since I'm hitting dungeon lockout anyways, instead of just going and playing an alt, if you're actually truly gold farming, your min-max right now, I feel like it's coming over here. Alright, let's see if we can get lucky with an essence. Getting a lot of resist on the level 55. I do try and avoid the 55s for a reason. Um... You get just way more resist. And let's see if I get an essence. Don't aggro that guy mid fight. There's actually no one here right now, which is kind of crazy because last night this place was swarmed. Did not get an essence, but yeah, that's the farm. I try and do those fights. Like again, the ZF pool gets so much easier when you start abusing the stacking. Um. And obviously, Blade of Eternal Darkness makes it easier, too. So if you can get your five lockouts down in 30 minutes, you fly over here. Literally, my guildie's just posting about getting one right now. So here's the, here's the item I'm talking about. I, I sold my last one for 35 gold. So, um, yeah, 
min max that come over here farm them between your zf lockouts maybe i doubt J oh there he is right there there's my guildy right there shout out to him he's the one that told me about weaving over here but there are other people over here sometimes so might not be possible on a pvp server but anyways um that's the updated zf farm i hope it's helpful i hope you guys um make good gold bye